Hi, if you are getting an ear surgery or recommended to have an ear surgery, whether it's a tympanoplasty or a mastoidectomy or a cochlear implant, and you're curious about what to expect after ear surgery, this video is for you. My name is Daniel Lee. I am an ear, nose, throat doctor based in Seattle, Washington, and I take care of a lot of ear patients and people who have ear surgery. So I've compiled a list of kind of frequently asked questions that people have preoperatively that I can help explain. So this video is for you guys. A um, couple, couple definitions that we have to talk through. One is tympanoplasty and one is mastoidectomy. As ENTs, we throw this term around because it's the bread and butter of ear surgery in general. A tympanoplasty, for a broad definition, is doing work on the eardrum itself. Lots of people think it's, oh, fixing a hole in the eardrum, but there are a lot of ear surgeries where we actually don't have a hole in the eardrum, but we do do a tympanoplasty to go inside the ear canal and do work on the ear drum itself so that we can work on the ear bones. That is a tympanoplasty. A mastoidectomy is also a very common ear surgery that we do, and there's a lot of variations in the types of mastoidectomies that we do. In general, we do ear surgeries for hearing loss, and we do ear surgeries for infection and cholesteatoma. When we do a mastoidectomy, usually the pathology or what's going on with your ear is a little bit more serious that we elect to do a mastoidectomy. And lots of times that involves a little bit more surgery and a little bit more time, and a little bit more healing um, from a broad, stroke, uh, broad strokes perspective. The number one thing that people ask me about when we talk about it is like, what kind of incision am I going to have after having ear surgery? So with a tympanoplasty, for most of the time, we can do all the surgery within the ear canal. So when we look at our ear here, this is the outside of the ear, this is our ear canal, here's our ear drum. We actually make our incisions kind of in the middle of the ear canal itself, and then we can work on the ear drum itself. So from the outside, you won't be able to see anything in terms of stitches or sutures on the outside. Three other places where you can have an incision. One is at the tragus, which is this soft piece of cartilage and skin in front of your ear itself. We like to take a piece of the tragus when we do a tympanoplasty to fix an eardrum hole because that's a really nice piece of firm tissue that we can use to reconstruct the eardrum. Sometimes this is becoming a little bit less uh, favored with surgeons is that you can actually have an incision at the top of the ear canal itself to get better access to the ear, ear drum. And the last one is a behind the ear incision when we do a mastoidectomy or even a tympanoplasty. Sometimes we can't see what we need to see inside the ear, so we'll go behind the ear and make an incision anywhere from one inch, two inch, even three inches long. And we try to make it not high enough that if you're wearing glasses, that it's gonna be painful while you heal. Most of the stitches that we use are absorbable, meaning that we don't have to take them out afterwards. How I like to close my mastoidectomies or a behind the ear incision is I like to put stitches underneath the skin so you don't see it and I like to use skin glue on it because it seals it up and it's something that heals up very nicely from that perspective. So when we talk about what to expect after ear surgery, I like to kind of explain it in two different buckets. One bucket being everything you're definitely going to experience after ear surgery and the second bucket is things you may experience just based on all the patients I've taken care of. Uh, number one is pain. In general, ear surgery is not that painful, such as getting your hip replaced or getting, having a big belly surgery, but every person's a little bit different in how they perceive pain. I have patients that I do a really big surgery on and they feel like themselves the next day. I might do a really small surgery and people might have a lot of pain for a week or two. On average and in general, I think that most patients will have probably two to three days of feeling pretty sore in their ear and which will continue to improve by the, by the end of the week. My regimen that I recommend to patients is Advil or ibuprofen 
and Tylenol acetaminophen and switching between the two every three hours. So between the Advil doses, it's six hours. And then between the Tylenol, it's also six hours. So you have something in your system the whole time. I will talk to my patients about whether they would like something stronger, such as a narcotic and like oxycodone, just in case they need it. Even when I do prescribe it, most people come back to clinic and say they didn't need to take it. As far as what to expect for drainage from the ear, when I don't mention it to patients that they're gonna have some blood and ointment coming out of the ear, they will inevitably call me in the middle of the night and be like, hey, why am I bleeding from the ear? So I always try to mention it to my, my patients. When we do ear surgery, again, behind the ear and inside the ear canal itself, we can't put any stitches inside the ear canal that we have blood and we put packing inside that is very common to have some sort of oozing of blood and ointment coming out of the ear and that is completely expected. As far as what to do about the drainage and what kind of dressing to expect, there's really two different types of dressings that we do. One is if you have a straightforward tympanoplasty and we just do everything inside the ear canal, you might just have a small cotton ball that we put right in the ear. Some people put a little piece of tape or a piece of band-aid on it. In your first day after surgery and even for a few days afterwards, do not be alarmed that this is gonna be soaked with blood and it's gonna be pretty icky. You might have to change it every 15 minutes or every 30 minutes on the first day. And as long as it's getting better over time, that's, that's the most important part. But you can switch it out as much as you need to as you, as you heal up. The other dressing that we do, this is very common for when we go behind the ear or if, uh, the surgeon expects that there's gonna be a lot of drainage from that. But this dressing is ca called a glass cock dressing or a mastoid dressing. And this goes around the head and this catches all the blood inside, but it also provides a little bit of pressure inside. For my patients, I talk about how I recommend taking this off the next day, either 24 hours or the morning of if it's too uncomfortable, um, and keeping this so that you can use it for later use. Another part of what to expect after ear surgery is what about my hearing? For most people, they might be surprised, but your hearing might actually feel like it's went down after ear surgery, and that's because inside the ear canal, and inside the eardrum, when we do ear surgery, it's gonna be full of blood and ointment and reconstruction that needs to dissolve over time. And it takes a few weeks to a couple months for all of that to dissolve. Your surgeon should mention that to you that it might take a few months for it to feel better. In my clinical practice, I actually test the hearing at the four month mark because that's about the amount of time it takes for me to see a big improvement in the hearing if we do reconstruct the ear itself. So don't be alarmed if we do an ear surgery to reconstruct your hearing. Your first day, it might feel even worse. It's gonna feel like an earplug inside your ear, but over time, as that dissolves, you should feel better from that perspective. Another thing that you'll definitely experience after ear surgery is weird poppy, crackly noises inside your ears. That is the blood and the water that's inside your ear healing. And it just takes a few days and maybe a couple weeks for it to start resolving in itself. As things heal up, you'll hear less and less of that and your ear will feel better from that perspective. So that was all the things that you definitely will experience after ear surgery. So let's talk about the little bit less common side effects that people can have after ear surgery. One of the weirder ones is weird taste in the mouth actually. So inside the ear canal, and inside the ear, there is a nerve called the chordae tympani, and that's actually a taste nerve that goes through the ear and actually ends up on that side of the tongue. Even when we do the perfect surgery where we leave the chordae tympani alone, people can wake up with having a, either they say it's a metal taste in their mouth or when they eat food, it tastes a little off. Some people, it takes a few hours for it to get better, some people a few days, some people a few months. Again, this is a very small fraction of people where they feel like they have that weird taste sensation. And even when we cut the nerve because there's infection or there's something wrong going with in the ear, your brain will readjust and give you that taste sensation back. So most, for most people, it is not permanent. Another uncommon 
side effect that people can have after ear surgery is a little bit of jaw pain. I've been seeing this a little bit more uh, with ear patients. And the idea is the jawbone is right next to the ear canal. You can actually feel it on yourself by opening your jaw that when we do ear surgery, we're right next to the jawbone so that when you have ear surgery, it can feel a little bit inflamed, a little bit sore there. And people can feel like, ah, why, do I, why does it hurt when I chew? Again, very common, take your, take your pain medications and it should get better as you heal up from your uh, medication, uh, as you heal up from your surgery itself. Another side effect that you can have is feeling a little bit dizzy. When we do ear surgery, the ear is actually right next to the balance center and or actually houses the balance center. So this is called the cochlea and this is called the semicircular canals. Inside here is where we get our hearing and this is where our balance center is. When we do ear surgery, for some people, even when we leave this portion of the surgery alone, people can feel a little bit inflamed and feel like they're either spinning or they see things moving or they just feel like they can't hold their balance very well. But I think it's a mix of anesthesia as well as the ear surgery. If your symptoms are really bad, contact your surgeon and we can discuss on wh whether there's something else that we need to be looking out for. Some people after ear surgery can feel a little bit of numbness in their ears. Most people I get who notice the numbness are people who have earrings and they touch their ear and like, huh, I don't have as much feeling as I once did before. Um, I feel like most of the people that have this sort of numbness are people that had the post auricular or the behind the ear cut on their ear. And everyone's just wired a little bit differently in their nerves that even when we do a big incision on someone that they'll have complete uh, nerve intact. And for other people, we can do a tiny incision, they feel like they're numbness, but something to know and do not be alarmed if this happens to you. For lots of people, the nerve grows back and you have sensation in that area. The last kind of uncommon side effect that you can have is spitting up blood. For, and it, make, it makes sense that most people can be a little bit alarmed by this because if you had ear surgery, why am I spitting up and coughing up blood? There's something called the eustachian tube inside the ear and it connects the middle ear so past your eardrum to the back of your nose. And we, when we do ear surgery, the middle of the ear gets full, filled with fluid and it gets filled with blood that for some people, it actually drains out of the eustachian tube into your nose and your throat and people feel like they're coughing up. But do not be alarmed. That's very expected after ear surgery itself. Well, that's all I have for common side effects to expect after ear surgery. Um, good luck on your recovery. There are great surgeons out there that will take good care of you. Make sure you ask them adequate questions, but hopefully this gives you a little bit more understanding of what to expect after ear surgery. Thanks.